Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Here at Modena, we're really pleased that you could join us, where we'll be speaking to you about the benefits of piping in Revit. My name is Mike Bredenkamp, and I'm the Strategic Account Manager for Modena Infrastructure in the construction and MEP space, and I'll be co-hosting this session with you today. This webinar is being recorded. It will be sent to you in the next day or so to recap on what we've actually covered today. And if you'd like to share it with any of your colleagues who weren't able to attend, please feel free to do so. You'll also be able to go to our website where all the recordings will be hosted. And if you have any questions during this webinar, please post your questions in the comment um, box where the Q&A session and um, one of our technical assistants will be able to answer it for you. For those of you who are just joining us, welcome. So now let me introduce today's presenter, Dino. Dino is one of Modern's application engineers whose specialized skills are in the mechanical and wet surface engineering. He's one of our in-house project managers, BIM managers, and asset specialists. His product skills include Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks, and BIM 360. He says one of his main skills is cooking two-minute noodles in one minute, 50 seconds. Nice skill, Dino. His industry belief is knowledge and application of knowledge equals success. So, without any delays, let's get started. Dino, over to you. Welcome everybody. Today I'll be presenting for you fire and water benefits of Revit MEP piping. Before we get started, I'd like you to introduce you to our team. Katie McKnight is our director here at Modern Infrastructure. Michael was the gentleman who just spoke to you all with the introduction to this webinar. He is our construction and MEP strategic account manager. And myself, the noodle specialist, We'll go through this webinar with you today. Just a brief introduction to Revit uh, piping. The idea here is that Autodesk Revit MEP software is an innovative tool uh, for you to complete your efficient piping workflow within the engineering field. Remember, Autodesk has leveraged Revit as a BIM product now, and there comes certain requirements and benefits when using these elements. Revit delivers a powerful BIM industry standard in mechanical, electrical, and piping within the AEC industry. And of course, if you are now isolating for Revit MEP piping, it allows you for quick and easy to model piping routes that can be tracked, monitored within your Revit project. So let's go through some of the main series features with Revit piping. Before we even start piping, we usually have to place out equipment, fixtures, fittings, whatever the requirement is. And of course, there are some real series benefits here because we are utilizing these items within the Revit package. So again, different equipment and fixtures can be utilized in the project. So regardless if you are running a uh, pump station or a storage tank, you can create these elements within the Revit MEP uh, side. Every equipment is built up differently, and it includes smart connectors that allow equipment to attach to a system. By the way, these smart connectors come with specific mechanical and piping data that can be used further when reporting or scheduled upon. There is BIM information available at a click of a button in every single pipe, equipment, fixture, whatever you are utilizing within Revit. And of course, you can go find electrical data, dimension data according to that specific family, and any type of mechanical piping data included. All these items can be filtered and even scheduled for. So even though it looks like a gray blob on your Revit screen, you can filter out for a specific coloration that you are utilizing within your standard and discipline. So of course, water pipes being blue, fire pipes being red, sanitary pipes being green and brown, you can go utilize those colorations within the filter dynamics of Revit. Revit MEP gives you a selection of different types of mechanical equipment as well as fixtures to utilize within your project. All items are built differently for different purposes. Each item serves its functionality within the Revit program. 
When selecting on an item, you have the ability to see all types of BIM information that you can leverage within the project, from constraints to material finishes, from electrical loads to mechanical data, as well as identity data that helps you distinguish key categories from the equipment itself. Revit MEP elements are also smart in the sense of they are telling you exactly what the purpose of this equipment is. For example, when I select on this element here, it is a pump station item with an inlet and an outlet, measuring a 30 diameter for the outlet and 40 diameter for the inlet. I'm also able to see power requirements, as well as any type of mark value that is very specific to the MEP element. All mechanical and plumbing fixtures can form part of systems. And of course, when we group these elements into systems, we can isolate key components that make up that particular system. So moving on from equipment, we can now deal with piping items. So once we've done our layouts, we can find some real benefits when instituting or using Revit piping elements. So the idea is that all pipes can form part of a system. All pipes can be filtered and grouped by systems. So whether your system is a hot water system, a cold water system, anything drainage, hydronic, or a specialized system like gas, for instance, that can be built within the project. Revit auto pipings on system elements. So once we have our layouts done, we can choose the system and we can tell Revit exactly where to place the piping for us. And of course, pipes can be alternated between 3D, 2D and schematic views. So you choose how you want to display your pipes, your routes, your systems. Within your Revit project, understanding that a plant room is not one system, but a system made up of smaller subsystems will help you leverage greater information and of course piping layouts within your project. If you utilize the system browser within Revit MEP, you can actually see a breakdown of the piping systems themselves from domestic hot water to hydronic supply. Every time you select on a set system, for example, supply feed into pump set one and expand upon it, you'll see that this is actually made up of different elements grouped into that system. By selecting these elements, you can then select those specific items within the system. Keep in mind, you're not limited to one system. So long as you have the right type of fixtures and equipment, you too can go create a multiple array of systems. Within my plant, you'll see that I've got a supply feed to my pump set one. Then my pump set one will supply my tanks. From here, my tanks will be, supply, uh, will be supplying two other uh, pump sets, pump set two and pump set three. Both pump sets are going to different routes within the building. One is supplying hot water, the other one is supplying cold water to the building. And of course, if you go to the hot water systems, you can see the breakdown of those elements that make up the hot water system. Because we have systems in place, instead of drawing out the pipes and connecting them, you can ask Revit to auto-generate these layouts for you. So by selecting on the system, you too can go automatically generate layouts. By updating the type of settings you have within your settings box, you can go choose from a different type solution of networks. There are four possible solutions here, all which seem perfect for the project. By pressing the finish command, you will see that the pipes and fittings are automatically installed within the Revit layout. Because there are different types of systems now created here within our plant room, we can go create different types and variations of our pipe routing elements. And of course, if you're looking at your schematics, they are telling you the best possible outcome for these items. Because we are utilizing piping elements within Revit MEP, 
It is as simple as going through to 3D to see a full scope of the pipe route itself, and of course, navigating back and forth to your 2D views. Over here, you can see a schematic of the pipe network that we have done. And just by a click of the button, we can go into a 2D view for these particular elements. And again, switch back to a schematic to get a more in-depth analysis of the pipe routing itself. So knowing that we can draw pipes in Revit is a simple idea. However, it's what we can do with these pipes that makes Revit such a powerful package. Revit does have analysis tools out there to assist us in our design. So the idea is that we want the benefits of analysis within Revit. So how can these items help us? Well, one, pipes draw mechanical information from equipment that they are attached to. So the nice thing about this is, as soon as there's a break within the system, whether it's between equipment, fixtures, fittings, accessories, Revit is clearly showcasing to us warning areas that our system is broken at a specific point. And of course, at a click of a button, that can be fixed. Revit easily identifies breaks again in piping systems. And if you clear these systems up, you too can go run a pipe pressure report for further analysis done on the piping. So whether you want to see a drop in pressure or flow, that can be leveraged within the report. This report is an HTML file, so once it exports out, you can email it to the relevant engineers that need to see it. And of course, when we run pipe pressure reports at a click of a button, sometimes we want to check beforehand. And using the inspector tool helps us see the flow within the pipe and basic analysis such as flow, static pressure, and pressure loss. And the more information you give to your MEP families, such as equipment and fixtures, the more data you will find within the inspector tool, as well as the pipe pressure reports. So let's take this analysis even further. When utilizing the auto-generating lab routes, keep in mind that Revit is trying to find the best possible solution for you. And because it is a product run by us, uh, being imperfect as we can be, sometimes Revit does not get it right. And it's now a make or break when it comes to the system itself. A lot of software packages out there make you redo this multiple times over. However, if you are able to go identify specific clashes, specific outcomes, and specific, what's it, uh, pipe sizings that are not meeting your requirements on the project. It is as simple as navigating into a different view and correcting it. As I navigate to the first floor plan, I'm able to go identify these elements that I would like to change for my pipe routing. And if I zoom in, I can go select on items, push and pull them to specific areas of the system. Keep in mind that this will not break the system. It will just update in the background. If you do not like the way Revit has designed the piping, you can actually break up the system and correct it. For example, what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to delete this pipe over here. I'm going to select this fitting and change it from a T to a bend. That way, this tank and this tank are connected. If I select the pipe, I can then connect this pipe to this pipe over here. And it's as simple as selecting pipe, choosing the correct pipe size you want, and then connecting from center to center. Revit does the rest for you. And of course, you can always go back to a 2D or 3D perspective to change the drawings themselves and update as you go along. Again, we did not break the system, we simply modified and updated. The same can be done over here. For example, if I take a look at this pipe sizing, it is a 50 diameter, and I'd like to use that pipe size all the way through. All I have to do is simply select the pipes I do not require, delete them from my project, 
And of course, take what's already existing, stretch it out, and connect. Revit will automatically fill in any type of reducer, fitting, bend, T, at any point in time for this piping element. Remember, Revit draws in smart pipes. And as I'm doing it in a 2D schematic, it is automatically updating in a 3D plan. There are other items to use in Revit to help you distinguish problematic areas within your piping systems. You can utilize the Analyze tab, of course, and the Show Disconnects button for pipes. This will show you all types of broken piping elements within your system. And again, if you are looking out for the warning signs, you can see any detachment, any open ends within your pipe routing layout. And again, it is as simple as connecting the pipe, closing off the system. This can be done in 3D and, of course, in 2D schematic. So once we're done with our design and once we have checked everything, we can actually leverage even more information from this. Revit has the ability to do BIM schedules or just basic quantifying items. So again, one of the main benefits here is we can quantify equipment, fixtures, fittings, accessories, pipes, and even more. If there's a category for it within the piping standard, we can go filter for these items. And of course, from here, we can go even further and we can use our models. So whatever we place in our models will automatically update in our schedules and vice versa. If you have to delete it out of the schedule, it will delete out of the model. So there might be something that you're quantifying for that doesn't necessarily have to be there. And if you don't want to delete it, you can always filter it out of the schedule. From here, not a lot of people work with the schedules within Revit. So what we can do for those users, especially for Excel guys, we can export out as a TXT file and we allow other users to draw on that specific information. However, the only drawback here is when you update your model, you will have to then export out an updated schedule. So let's take a look at this within the Revit environment. In Revit, everything has its place. All pipes, all equipment, all fixtures are all registered under their own category within the Revit space. Because we have this filing capability within Revit and because of parameters attached to our elements, everything within the Revit project can be quantified. In the View tab, within the Schedules box, you too can go drop down and create your own type of schedules and quantities. In my project, you'll see that I've got a schedule for mechanical equipment, listings, and BOQ with cost parameters attached to it. If I go to my plumbing fixtures, the same thing for my tanks. And if I navigate to my pipe fittings, I can isolate every single pipe fitting size within my Revit project. And it doesn't just stop there. As you can see, I've got diameter 25 piping BOQ, 32 and 40. Because I've already created these elements, I can reuse them for different types of piping. Once something has been duplicated, it is as simple as changing the naming convention. And the nice thing about this is whatever is done here will not affect other schedules. As you can see, this schedule is registering for 40 millimeter diameter pipe. But again, because we have a filter category, we can filter out all 40s for 50s. If you're looking at my fittings required for the pipe, and if you're looking at my cost requirements, these are now wrong because these are scheduled for 40. That's an easy fix as these parameters have been created. By selecting the parameter, you too can go edit it update the naming convention, and of course, update the price. As you can see, this parameter is taking a length measured in millimeters, dividing it by one meter and timesing it by 50 rand. When I press OK, it automatically updates and it updates my schedule. I get a total cost and a total length of pipe, as well as how many instances of this pipes have been used, 
width fittings required for every two meter length of pipe. Revit schedules can go even further. The nice thing about having such a live uh, schedule and quantity listing in Revit is that it binds itself to the model. So whatever you do in the model will update in the schedule. And whatever you update in the schedule will update within the model as well. For example, if I go to my plumbing fixture schedule, you'll see that I've got four tanks. By simply navigating to a first floor view, I can go duplicate my tanks. So I'm going to select these four, copy, and paste to the right-hand side here. And the moment I go into my schedules, I've now got a listing for eight tanks, and it's still calculating all the cost values. Again, we have the ability to do this because within any of our components in our data, we can go update all of this information. The same can be done with piping, with fittings, with mechanical equipment. Your elements in Revit from the model are again linked to your schedule. So design and let Revit calculate and keep track of all elements that are taking shape within your design. So let us backtrack and summarize why we should be using the piping elements within Revit MEP. So again, as a reminder, pipes, 2D, 3D piping systems that are grouped, tracked, monitored, and a simple to define within a Revit project. BIM information readily available within pipes, fixtures, fittings, equipment, and more. And that's not just naming conventions, manufacturing items. This is now cost elements, mechanical data, electrical data, piping data when required on your project. Another benefit is the auto-generating pipe routes, easily adjustable within the project. Remember, if you allow Revit to do the bulk of the work for you, there's nothing wrong with going back, checking, and updating. It takes far quicker to update what Revit has done than actually designing the routing system yourself. Utilizing the Analyze tool sets, this can help us find and solve problematic pipe routes within our project. Close out open ends, find detached equipment, or fixtures, and of course, complete the flows within the project. And of course, models and schedules are linked during all phases of the piping project. So whether you've started with a schedule or you are ending with a schedule, whatever you are doing, Revit is tracking between the schedule and the model. And of course, there's a full 3D and 2D integration layout at a click of a button. Whether you want to go 3D and view the full parameter of the pipe within a realistic view, or whether you want to be in a 2D floor plan with a schematic, Revit gives you that option. So I want to thank you guys for your time in the session. I'm now going to hand over back to Michael. Thanks, Dino. Uh, great session, Matt. I'm quite sure that everybody actually agrees. I see we've actually got a bit more time left, so uh, let's see if there's uh, any questions from the group. So guys, please post your questions in the Q&A box, so Dina and uh, myself can answer any questions that you have. Okay, so we have a question so far from Donovan. It says, can I create a pipe schedule that takes the information from the pipe fittings, the lengths, descriptions, quantity, and tabulated, Dina? Definitely. So if you were looking at my session here, you'd see that my pipe schedules are very basic. They just gave me a length and diameter size. But if there's a description to the pipe, if there's a material finish to the pipe, if your pipe has a specific type or standard that it's following, and you've included that information within the edit type box, you can schedule for it within your Revit project. So Michael, while we're waiting for the next questions, were there any specific features you liked? 
I think it's great to actually see uh, Dino with regards to the piping aspect and how it basically works with the equipment and um, how to basically simplify it for ourselves in terms of using in the schedules and also basically publishing that information that we need. All right. I see that we've got another question here from Christelle. How to add cost rates to pipes, fittings, and equipment? That's a good question. So equipment is actually the easiest element to add costings for. Because in your edit type box, you will find a little costing parameter and you add the value to the equipment or fixture itself. However, when it comes to fittings and pipes, you will have to actually add that within the schedule under what we call a calculative parameter. So you go create a parameter which has a formula-based element, for example, cost for pipe. And what you'll write out there is the length divided by one meter. So if you're doing a meter cost, and the reason why we divide it by the 1,000 is because Revit is constantly reading in millimeters. So if we divide it by that one meter mark, we get a value, which we can then bind it to a cost. So in my formulas, if you were watching, you'd see it was a length divided by 1,000 times the price. And that gave me a basic cost for my piping. Do you know, with regards to a, the costing aspect in terms of the pipes and fittings that Crystal asked, is it bidirectional that it can be linked to a ERP system? Hmm. That's actually a good one. Um, not from what I've seen, but there are programs out there such as Sigma Bin360, which allows you to link your Revit files. And if you have that ability, then you've got a direct, uh, if I could say, link to, to the program, to the costing, to what you need to be done. Okay, perfect. I gotta say, one of the features I, I'm recently enjoying now is the auto-generating tools. I got a little bit lazy within my modeling aspects because now I let Revit do it for me. And if you combine it now with Dynamo, there's abilities now to actually integrate piping to run parallel with each other. So you can imagine hot and cold water running parallel in a building. I think that's a good topic of uh, suggestion for the next webinar then actually. Yeah. So if you guys have a suggestion that you would like us to touch upon within MEP, it doesn't have to be piping initially, you're more than welcome to pose it to us. All right, we've got another question here. Do you have courses for Dynamo and where do you start learning? So this is a great, great news, Michael. Do we, do, have these yeah, courses? we do actually have the courses available actually through our head office, Modern Design Centers. Um, you can actually contact your account manager or just uh, as we're going to leave the information shortly in the, after the Q&A session, you can contact us and we can basically structure the training around your needs and requirements. We do have a generic course but we have been finding that a lot more clients are actually wanting a specialized Dynamo training for them in line with their disciplines. So we can definitely help and assist with that. If that doesn't work for you in terms of that type of training, you can also get hold of our Pinnacle series, which is our online e-learning platform. Right. So hopefully, Crystal, that answers your question. Um, Another question we have here, have you ever used the pipe sizing tool and how accurate are they? So I've actually used the pipe sizing tool. It's, it's pretty fun to, to utilize. I'm one of the type of designers who designs the pipe size accordingly, but sometimes I want to check what Revit is suggesting for me. So if you are utilizing the, the tool, if I may make a bit of a suggestion here, don't select the pipe that you want to uh, size up, select the roots of pipes. So allow Revit to upsize and downsize the pipe for you, adding in any type of reducer, union, break, whatever the case is. And from there, again, if you are not satisfied with what Revit has been given and you know that there's a better approach, you can physically put in the pipe in place. It's a fact that Revit does the bulk of the work for you. So instead of wasting two hours drawing out pipe, uh, take 30 minutes uh, just correcting what Revit has done. I gotta say, that's one of the things that's been popping up a lot with my designs, is the fact that we, we wasted so much time 
generating uh, pipes. Just randomly click, draw, take the bins. There is that routing that is available. But again, I, I can't stress this enough. It's one of those things that you just don't look back at after you start utilizing uh, the auto-generating items. Okay, so another question. Um, how good is auto-piping for sprinkler systems? Christelle, it's pretty good. Before I started with this webinar, I was actually messing around with sprinklers and fire piping for the auto-generating item. So if me and you connect uh, by email or something, I'm, sh I'm sure uh, I can show you uh, a few tips and tricks with that item as well. There's a lot of customized and specialist um, training that Dino actually does do. Um, he does hold different sessions with people, um, not just on a one-to-one -one basis, but in group sessions. So if anybody wants to be part of those sessions, uh, you can actually have a look at our customized training modules, which is, we call it the Revit Core Competency Programs that we normally schedule on a Friday afternoon. Or you can basically you know, have a one-to-one -one session with them to go through any types of additional training you feel that will be beneficial to yourself and also customized to your needs, especially with um, the usage of Dynamo these days. It's becoming a lot more relevant, especially within our discipline. And the nice thing about this is if there's a course that does not appear in our listings, it doesn't stop us from trying to create the course ourselves specifically uh, for your industry needs. So regardless if you're in domestic uh, or potable cold and hot water, sanitary, fire piping, gas, give us the challenge. We, we are more than welcome to, to take it on. Okay, guys, uh, has anybody got any more questions? We're going to give it one more minute and then we can look at ending the session with you guys. All right, we've got another one. Good day. There is an add-on from uh, Deroot that can link your tables to your Revit elements and update the shared parameters according to the table is reloaded. Check it out. It's great. Anonymous, I will definitely check it out. Thank you for the link there. Let's take a look at how these add-ons affect our Revit processes, especially for piping. Uh, I thank you for the link again. All right, guys. So for more information, if you didn't get a chance to... Uh, ask your question or you would like to inquire about something, we do have uh, emails that you guys can utilize. So contact uh, Moderna for your Revit piping needs. And of course, you can talk to any of our sales guys and myself. And there is our support number right at the bottom. So again, if you have a question, if you need support, if you have an inquiry, do contact us. Perfect. Thanks, Tina. Thank you everyone for joining us. We'd just like to uh, thank you again for your time. Dina, appreciate the topics that you covered today. It's definitely brought some more insights into the capabilities of Revit. Like Dina mentioned, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to contact either himself, him directly or our technical team. If you've got any sales queries, you can contact myself or Katie and we will get back to you as quick as we can. Guys, have a fantastic uh, end to your week and thank you again for joining us. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.